thanks for the introduction. Uh, my name is Chi Yang. I'm from Florida State University. So I'm very happy to be here to present our work on live disk detection for voice authentication on smartphone. So this is joint work with my student Ning Han Zhang and uh, Sun Tan at FSU and also Professor Yin Chen at Stevens Institute of Technology. So our voice, um, okay. So our voice as a, a primary way of communicating is also an attractive uh, biometric uh, for differentiate different users. It reflects uh, the individual differences in both psychologic and the behavioral characteristics, such as the shape of the vocal track and the inflections. So voice authentication leveraging building a uh, microphone of, um, on the smartphones or mobile device is attractive uh, way to perform mobile authentication and it is uh, no cost and convenient compared to that of traditional password based uh, authentication which actually requires memorization and also is hard to use while on the go. Um, so mobile uh, voice authentication actually uh, it's now popular because of uh, uh, advancement of mobile technology. It has been used in an array of diverse uh, mobile applications. For example, uh, uh, Google recently, uh, uh, Google already integrated the voice authentication in its uh, operating system so as to perform an uh, uh, unlock device. And also, Tencent has uh, updated its uh, WeChat mobile application to support uh, voice logins. And another appealing use case of voice authentication is in uh, financial service. Uh, for example, the online payment. And also an increasing number of financial institutes are developing voice authentication uh, for their online banking system. And uh, this trend is expected to grow at a rate of uh, about 22% yearly until 2019 uh, and will result in an estimated market share of more than one uh, hundred billion dollars uh, by the 2017. So this uh, voice authentication has uh, became a very attractive alternative to the password based authentication for uh, mobile uh, applications. Um, however, recent studies suggest that the voice authentication is vulnerable to replay attacks where an adversary can spoof the authentication system by using a pre-recorded voice sample of the victim. And such attacks are either accessible to the adversary because uh, the popular, uh, popularity of the mobile, de uh, mobile device that are capable of recording like your smartphone and the digital recorder. And also it is highly effective uh, because the uh, attacker can actually connect the voice sample from users publicly exposed uh, speech and also the private conversations. So this, um, uh, this uh, replay attack presents significant uh, threats to voice authentication and is drawing increasing attention. For example, Google advised users on the vulnerability of voice login by displaying a pop-up message, um, such as a recording of your voice could unlock your device. An existing solution uh, to defend against uh, a replay attack uh, rely on uh, live disk detection, for example, some research suggests that we can compare the input voice sample with that of the instance of past access to the authentication system. So if they produce very high similarity, which indicates that it, the input voice sample has been seen before by the authentication, uh, authentication system, so that a replay attack is detected. However, this, uh, this method cannot work if the recording is connected during a non-authentication uh, time point. And some other researchers suggest that uh, uh, the background noise and the channel noise introduced by the recording and the loudspeaker can be used to uh, detect uh, the replay attack. But this method in practice has limited effectiveness as the uh, false acceptance rate could be as high as 17%. So in our work, we uh, build a phony localization-based live disk detection system by leveraging the uh, human speech production system and also the advanced uh, smartphone audio hardware. So first, in human uh, speech production system, uh, uh, a phony is the smallest distinctive uh, unit sound of a language, and we can actually locate the phony sound within human's vocal track system by using certain acoustic localization methods. 
And second, uh, current smartphone support advanced audio capability. For example, virtually all smartphones are equipped are equipped with two microphones for stereo recording at the uh, standard sampling rate of 48 kilohertz and also high sampling rate of 192 kilohertz. So such uh, advanced uh, audio capability can provide very accurate acoustic ranging. For example, with sampling rate of 192 kilohertz, we can have the acoustic range accuracy and resolution uh, at around uh, two millimeter. So that we can leverage this, this stereo recording and also the uh, millimeter uh, level acoustic ranging to pinpoint the uh, phony sound so as to perform um, live detection. Okay. So uh, for the audio uh, voice authentication system, we primarily focus on the text dependent system, uh, which uh, is currently our uh, most commercially viable method and provide better accuracy with shorter uh, utterance compared to that of uh, uh, text independent system. And in this text dependent system, uh, the text to be spoken by a user uh, is the same one for both enrollment and uh, verification phase. For the attack model, we consider the replay attack that can take place at two points. The first point is at the uh, microphone point. We I refer it as a playback that uh, playback attack where an adversary can um, play can use a, a loudspeaker to play the voice sample uh, in front of the uh, microphone that used for authentication. And then the second point is at the transmission point that is adversary simply replace the voice sample before during uh, voice transmission. And we know that our system can also be extended to that of uh, uh, text independent system. So next I will introduce the background information on the human speech production system. So there are, uh, there are three major uh, psychological components uh, in human uh, speech production system, which are nouns, the vocal track, and the vocal cord. So first, when we uh, exhale, uh, the diaphragm will move up, and the air, air is expelled from the lungs, and then goes up to pass the vocal cord. And then the vocal cord can open or close to dilate or constrict the airflow so as to produce unvoiced or voiced uh, sound. Such sound is then uh, resonated and uh, reshaped by the vocal track that involves multiple organs like your nibs, uh, teeth, thumbs, and uh, nose. And uh, for each uh, phony sound, it can be categorized, uh, categorized as either a, a vowel or a, a, a consonant. And the vowel sound will be produced when the vocal cord constricts the airflow, but with open vocal track. Um, the most important factor that distinguish one vowel from another vowel is the tongue's position. For example, in this figure, we show that uh, when your tongue's position uh, moves to the lower right color, uh, the sound A will be pronounced. Uh, if you move your tongue's position to the uh, right upper color or the forward, the uh, sound of E and O will be pronounced respectively. And uh, this next chart shows the uh, uh, vowel chart, which describes the two-dimensional movement of tongue position, which is uh, uh, forward, backwards, and uh, up and down. And also, this shows the corresponding uh, vowel sound. Unlike vowel, uh, the consonant uh, will be pronounced uh, uh, when the vocal cord either constrict or dilate the airflow with significant constructions of airflow in the oral cavity. So the two most important factors that distinguish one consonant from another is the place of articulation and the manner of articulation. So specifically, the place of uh, articula uh, articulation uh, uh, is the place where the construction of airflow occurs, which can be categorized as six group, as shown in this figure, and also we show the corresponding uh, uh, consonants. And within each group, the consonants can be further distinguished by the manner of articulation, which shows that these uh, uh, three groups, uh, uh, six groups. So the combined effect of this uh, uh, place of articulation and manner of uh, articulation can allow us to locate the sound range of different uh, consonant uh, at different physical location within human vocal tract system. 
So next we show that how the, uh, how each phony sound will be located within human uh, vocal tract system by using a magnifying array. We use a three uh, pair of independent uh, microphone with a similar rate of 192 kilohertz, which result in about uh, uh, two uh, millimeter uh, uh, ranging resolution accuracy. So for this figure, we first show these red dots which correspond to the uh, uh, vowel sounds. Uh, we can see that uh, uh, the located sound range of these uh, uh, vowel sounds actually match the corresponding tone position very well. Next, we show the localized sound range of uh, consonants. Uh, we can observe that some of the sound range of consonants actually uh, close to the place of uh, articulation, but some others are affected by the uh, manner of articulation. And uh, further, we can observe that uh, uh, these uh, sound range are mainly distributed within this uh, uh, oral and uh, uh, lateral uh, cavities. And last, but also very importantly, we observe that even for the same uh, phony sound, different users produce, uh, tend to produce different localized sound arranging because of individual diversity, such as different shape of vocal tract and different uh, haptic way of pronunciation. So um, ideally, locating a, a phony sound requires at least three microphones with three individual channels. Uh, current smartphone with a, a stereo recording, okay, cannot uh, localize each phony sound, but we can measure the time difference of arrival of each phony sound to two, uh, mic uh, two microphones uh, of the phone. So for each phony sound, we can get one TDOA value. So when the smartphone is closely placed to the user's mouse, we can actually have a uh, TDOA difference can, we can have measurable uh, TDOA difference among most of this uh, uh, phony sound, okay? And uh, very importantly, each phony sound, uh, each passphrase usually consists of three to five words, which produce a series of phony sounds, so that we can obtain uh, the TDOA uh, values for this series of uh, 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 phony sound with various uh, TDOA values. And we then refer the change in the TDOA uh, values as the TDO dynamic, which is further used for uh, live list detection. So in this case, by renexing the Fourier localization to measuring the uh, TDOA dynamics of a sequence of phony sound, we can enable the live list detection using a single uh, mobile, mobile phone without additional uh, microphones. So here is the approach overview. Uh, first, the user can speak uh, out, uh, alternately uh, or, uh, or passphrase, say the voice, and then this, uh, uh, each of these uh, phony sounds will emit from the human uh, speech uh, vocal track system and then propagate to the uh, phone. And this phone uses stereo recording to record the voice samples and then it deduces the time difference of arrival of each phony to the two microphone of the phone. After that, we connect this sequence of TDO measurements and then use the changes of these measurements as a TDO dynamic for leverage detection. So we compare the extracted TDO dynamics to that of the one we extracted when user enrolled in the system. If these uh, two TDO dynamics produce very high similarity that ex exceed a predefined threshold, we declare that this is a live user. Otherwise, we declare there is a, a replay attack. So realizing our system uh, includes uh, three important steps. First one is uh, phony segmentation, the second is TDOA calculation, and the third one is uh, a similarity comparison. So first, phony uh, segmentation uh, is used to extract each phony exist in the uh, voice samples. So uh, the basic uh, uh, idea is to actually look at the spectrum gram of the voice sample, and uh, for the valves, actually, we can discover that uh, uh, for this uh, spectrum gram, we can discover there are uh, a number of overtone speech exist, which is referred as the format. And uh, the first uh, and the second for, uh, format, F1, F2, are enough to differentiate different uh, 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 vowel sound so that we can use F1, F2 to segment the, the vowel sound. However, for the uh, consonant, actually it presents a mixture of random frequencies, so we cannot use F1, F2 to identify a consonant. Instead, we use force alignment by using a hidden Markov 
model uh, to label the consonant. Specifically, we first uh, recognize the words exist in the voice symbols based on the MFC feature of the voice symbol. And then based on the words, we use the standard pronunciation model and the Markov uh, uh, chain model to label each uh, consonant. Okay. So after we get uh, each uh, uh, phony sound segmentation, uh, we next perform TDOA uh, calculation. So specifically, we just count the number of DNA samples of the phony sound to uh, two microphones. So this figure shows that after we extract uh, this phony sound at two microphones, we just uh, coordinate the seg segmented phony sound at two microphones to uh, get the samples. For example, we can move the second channel forward and calculate the coordination coefficient. And then the time point that gives us the highest coordination coefficient is the time point that we can use to count the, delayed, delayed, uh, the number of delay samples. And in practice, we use the general cost coordination with uh, phase transformation techniques to uh, improve the system robustness to this uh, uh, multi-pass effect. So next, after we obtain the TDOA value, we uh, normalize this TDO dynamics to the same scale as that we had in the user profile. So this can be uh, used to handle the device diversity and also the phone displacement. Uh, displacement. Next, we use two metrics to quantify the similarity between the extracted TDOA dynamic uh, with the one in the user profile. So the first one is uh, cross coordination, Pearson coordination metric is used to measure the similarity of the shape between two TDOA dynamics. The second one uh, is use probability-based method, which actually focuses on measure the uh, individual uh, TDOA uh, values by assuming that the the uh, ranging arrow follow a Gaussian distribution. Okay. So uh, after we get the similarity score, we can simply compare it to a predefined threshold for level user detection. So here are some uh, key property of the TDO, uh, TDOA dynamics. So this TDO di dynamics is determined by the specific passphrase. Um, the user's vo uh, unique vocal track system and also the placement and uh, location of the phone relative to user's position. So first, different passphrase you are uh, you already consider of a different uh, uh, phony sound, which need to different TDO dynamics. So second, even for the same uh, uh, passphrase, different users tend to produce different TDO dynamics because of individual diversity, like different shape of vocal track and also different uh, uh, habitual way of pronunciation. And third, this TDO dynamic is uh, place and uh, location de uh, dependent. For example, with the same passphrase, uh, uh, with different uh, placement like the horizontal and the vertical placement shown in this figure, the TDO dynamic are totally different. And further, uh, if we move the phone away from the user's mouth, the measurable uh, TDO difference among the uh, uh, phone is will be reduced quickly. For example, if we place phone at three centimeters uh, to the user's uh, uh, mouse, then we can get the measurable TDOA difference among all the uh, phony sound as six centimeters. However, it will be reduced to one centimeters if we place the phone 30 centimeters away from the mouse, okay? So with one centimeter measurable difference, most of the phony sound has the same TDOA value. So there is no TDOA dynamic exist in the connected TDO measurement. So this uh, probably also suggests that uh, our system does require user to uh, place the phone at a similar pose and position to that of uh, when the user enrolled in the system. It also indicates that if the attacker connects the voice sample with a different pose and a different location related to the user's uh, mouse compared to the user, then actually it will get different TDO, TDOA dynamics. To evaluate our system, we uh, use three types of phone with different uh, size and different audio chip, and we uh, experience with two placement, which is vertical and uh, horizontal placement that is relative to the user's mouth. And the phone is uh, approximately uh, at the distance of one to three centimeter, centimeters to a user's mouth. And we have three type of sampling frequency, 40, uh, 48, 96, and 192 kilohertz. 
And we recruit uh, 12 participants, and the uh, participants are informed, uh, informed about the purpose of, of the experiments. That is, they are required to uh, perform the data connection as if they are uh, performing uh, voice authentication. And each user is free to select 10 different passphrases, and each passphrase they perform 10 uh, uh, modification. And to enroll each user in the system, user actually uh, just speak three times of the passphrase so that we can connect the average TDA value. So to simulate this attack, we use different loudspeaker, and also we have static case and mobile case. Because with stationary speaker, we tend to produce fixed value of TDA. So we also move the speaker around so that we can have a TDA dynamic, okay, in the TDA measurements. For the replace attack, uh, we actually ask attacker to connect the data uh, by place the phone at different position relative to user's uh, uh, mouse. And we experience, experience uh, uh, with different uh, uh, distance, uh, which are categorized into uh, several categories. So here is the performance, performance of playback attack in terms of accuracy and uh, uh, EQ error rate. And we have uh, the overall uh, accuracy as uh, 90, uh, 99% with EQL rate uh, at about 1%. And as for replace attack, we have this uh, uh, distance which uh, fall into the intimate, uh, int uh, intimate, which that is attacker are very close to the uh, uh, victim. And also personal space, that is they are probably uh, friends and uh, social and beyond, which means that in public space. So in this case, we can say that uh, when increasing the distance between phone and the uh, uh, user, we get a better performance. But overall, we can have more than 90%, 99% of accuracy. So next shows that the phone displacement, because we require user to have phone placed uh, at similar pose and uh, location as that uh, when user enrolled in the system. So we experienced with this displacement at one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters in X and Y, Z, uh, access which corresponds to left, down, and the forward position. And as we can say that uh, when we increase the displacement, the performance gets worse. But overall, we can have uh, more than 98% of accuracy, even if we have three centimeter uh, displacement. So here is the conclusion. Uh, this uh, concludes my talk. Uh, I would be happy to take any question. If you have questions, please line up at the microphone. Same procedure as always. I already see someone back there. Please. Um, I would like to ask about the usability of this uh, system that you have. I mean, how easy is it for uh, uh, users to authenticate using this method? Did you study this? Um, so right now, we don't have this uh, user usability, uh, usability study. But uh, as you mentioned, we do require that uh, the user remember the pose and the location relative to the mouse he used for, for enroll, enrollment. So that is one requirement, or you can say that is one limitation. Other questions? Well, let me ask one. So did you, do you have a notion of how big the space is of the points that you can measure within the, the human throat? Like yeah, so that's a very good question. Um, as we mentioned, we, we have this sound arranging that uh, distributed within this, uh, uh, mainly the, the, the oral cavity. So this size is about uh, uh, four centimeter by four centimeter. So uh, with the 192 uh, kilohertz stimulant frequency, we can have uh, about uh, uh, 20 uh, samples difference. Uh, and with uh, 48 kilohertz, we can have uh, about around, uh, I think, five, around five samples of difference. But the key point here is that uh, usually we have uh, like uh, five words which result in more than 10 phonies. So that uh, means that it will give you space, which is about, uh, for example, 192 kilohertz. The space here is uh, uh, 20 to the power of 10, or five to the power of 10 in case of 48 kilohertz. 
Uh, Gilles Tunjai from University of Illinois. Uh, very interesting work. Um, it seems that the, uh, the TDOA-based uh, uh, technique works only when you're like really close to the phone, right? Right. So, is do you are you like thinking of any ways of uh, extending this? Is there any way? Um, so, I think uh, if you want to extend the working distance, um, one way, straightforward way, is you just simply improve the sampling frequency. Mm -hmm. But currently, it looks like it's uh, kind of hard mm -hmm. because uh, uh, right now the highest, of course, for, 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 the, for the voice or for the music, 48 kilohertz is enough. Okay. Right now, the operating system support 192. I didn't say that in the near f uh, future that uh, mm -hmm. the sampling frequency could be improved beyond 192. Okay. But of course, uh, there are some professional devices that could, could provide a sampling frequency uh, far beyond 192, but uh, I didn't say it could be equipped on the mobile device. Okay, I see. Thank you. Hi, this is Vesta from University of Illinois. Um, so the limitation is quite interesting, I would say, because if you have to hold it very close, why wouldn't you use a proximity sensor, for instance, instead of you know, um, using the microphone? Mm -hmm. um, and that comes down to what other devices possibly you can put it in. Um, for instance, Alexa uses the same um, you know, microphone and, and, and voice commands that it can do replay attack on it. But then with your solution, the user needs to hold Alexa very close to their, to their face and then talk to it. Um, have you guys thought about like putting the solution in other devices besides mobile phones that they're um, taking you know voice commands like Tesla for example, it receives voice commands. Um, yeah, that's actually a very interesting suggestion. Uh, right now, uh, we we actually only consider that uh, so for sometimes you you perform voice authentication that uh, with the use case that you you actually has very close distance of phone to the to the mouse, but we can probably. Uh, get the help from the other device. I think that's a, that's a very interesting di direction to extend this work. Thank you. I see no further questions. With that, let's thank Chi once again. OK, thanks for staying with me.